Today I'm going to tell you how to eliminate the sulfites in your glass of wine really easily. In most cases I would say there's really no need to do this. We've used sulfites in wine for hundreds of years ever since Europeans started burning sulfur in their barrels only to find that those wines were much, much better. They aged longer, they tasted fresher. So between sulfites and better glass, it's really the advent of modern wine. And when wine became considered a premium product instead of kind of a rubbish product that people didn't really want to drink beyond maybe those first few months when it was really young and still just not good. When oxygen encounters a wine, it really just breaks it down in the worst possible ways. It turns it to vinegar. It turns it to um, these things that smell like acetone. Also these things that can smell like bruised apples, just things that you would not consider in a premium wine. Now, if you remove those sulfites right before drinking the wine though, and you don't go overboard, you can still have a fresh wine without sulfite, without those negative effects. If I were to uncork this bottle for a few hours and then put a topper on it and leave it for a week or so, the sulfite levels would drop quite a bit, possibly all the way, uh, because that sulfite is going to react with that oxygen. What we're gonna use today though is hydrogen peroxide. We're gonna really rapidly react with that sulfite and wipe it out. In general, we measure sulfite in wine in parts per million, which is also equivalent to milligrams per liter. One milligram per liter equals one part per million. Wine at the time of bottling normally has between about 20 parts per million to 40 parts per million or 20 to 40 milligrams per liter of free sulfur dioxide. So if you convert that to your 750 milliliter bottle, that's about 15 to 30 milligrams of free SO2 in this bottle. The hydrogen peroxide we're gonna use is 3% pharmaceutical grade. And for every milligram of free SO2, we're gonna need about 0.018 milliliters of our 3% hydrogen peroxide. So you can already tell it's not gonna take much. We're talking in drops, not teaspoons or anything like that. This white wine in front of me is from the Little Backyard Vineyard and I just measured it at 20 milligrams per liter. A glass of wine is about 150 milliliters, so 0 0.15 liters. So let's do our little equation. We've got 20 milligrams per liter in the wine. We'll multiply that by 0 0.15 liters, that's one glass of wine. And then we'll multiply that by 0 0.018. And that gets us about 0 0.05 milliliters. And that's pretty convenient because one drop, uh, whether you use a pipette or you just use a little syringe and take a singular drop out of the end is about 0 0.05 milliliters. So for one glass of this wine, we're going to use one drop of hydrogen peroxide. And we'll do that and then we'll test it again. After adding the drop, I swirled this for a few minutes and just let it sit, maybe up to five minutes for this reaction to complete. And I tested it and as expected, it took no titrant to get the meter to register. That means I have zero free SO2 in this wine. So I mentioned that in general wines have between 20 and 40 parts per million. What that converts to then is per 150 milliliter glass, you're gonna need between one and two drops of hydrogen peroxide to wipe out that free SO2. During this reaction, a little minuscule bit of sulfuric acid will be produced. And this is already gonna be in the wine. It's not gonna be enough to even shift the pH. So don't really worry about that. Now, if you were to add too much hydrogen peroxide to the wine, what it'll do is it'll start rapidly oxidizing the ethanol in the wine, which will oxidize to acetaldehyde, which is not really 
great for you. It's in pretty much every aged wines. Personally, I'll take sulfur dioxide over acetaldehyde. You can't really perceive it to be there. Whereas acetaldehyde, I really can and I don't like it. And I'd love to hear from you guys if this is helpful for you. Um, some people actually are sensitive to sulfites. Most people are not. Um, Give it a try if you have a respiratory irritation when you sniff a wine that's probably the sulfur dioxide or sulfites if you get a headache it's probably one of those many many other compounds in the wine that are causing that but you know what who knows everybody's different so let me know in the comments if you otherwise just want to learn more about winemaking make sure to check out some more of my videos and click subscribe below thanks for watching